these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Bill and Hillary Clinton have definitely transitioned from middle class to multi-millionaires over the years. And it's notable when we take a look at the couple's home. The first property Bill and Hillary lived at before they were public figures is located in Arkansas, and the quaint one-bedroom spread has now been made into a museum. Well, after this, the Clintons lived in government-provided residences for 18 years. This included the governor's mansion in Arkansas to the White House. After Bill's run as president of the United States, the couple would settle into their current home in 1999, a four-level white Georgian colonial located in Chappaqua, New York. Before we look at Bill and Hillary Clinton's main family home, let's check out some they've lived in over the years. The first known property of the couple before they became public figures is a quaint residence that's now on the National Register of Historic Places. Located in Arkansas, more specifically in the area of Fayetteville, this humble abode spanned 1,800 square feet of space and offered only one bedroom. The future president of the United States and Secretary of State were married in the living room of this home in October of 1975, and it was an active center for political activity in Arkansas during these years. Almost two decades later, Bill and Hillary would enter the White House. The home, which is now a museum, is a well-maintained 1930s Tudor revival style in the Ozark Mountains. These days, the exhibits at the museum include memorabilia from Bill's early political career and even more personal items like a replica of Hillary's wedding dress. Outside, the home offers the First Lady's Garden, which is stocked full of Hillary's favorite flowers. Next up, the Clintons lived in this Arkansas home from 1976 to 1978, while Bill was the Attorney General of Arkansas in Little Rock. The also humbly sized two bedroom abode was a stepping stone for the couple before they would move into the governor's mansion. Bill and Hillary would live in the governor's mansion in Little Rock two separate times, considering Clinton served as the governor of this state for five terms, from 1979 to 1981, and then again from 1983 to 1992. The large mansion was a step up from what the couple was used to with its opulent exterior, fountains, and all. As I'm sure you know, the Clintons would next move into the White House when Bill became president of the United States from 1993 to 2001. Bill, Hillary, and their daughter Chelsea called this place home for nearly a decade, and in 2000, the pair gave a tour of the home for Fox News. The stateroom also got a redesign from Hillary herself during their tenure here. After Bill and Hillary departed the White House after his run as president, they found a home on Old House Lane in Chappaqua, New York, which they quickly snapped up for $1.7 million in 1999. This home also served as their residence while Hillary Clinton was a New York senator from 2001 to 2009. And surprisingly enough, the couple still reside in this very home while their daughter moved to New York City. The Clintons keep their main home tightly under wraps, but it's a four-story white Georgian colonial abode, and from what we have seen, it looks absolutely gorgeous. Located on a tree-lined cul-de-sac, the property spans a sprawling 1.1 acres of land, while the main house's exterior is characterized by the barn-like shape of the roof. The home was built in 1889, which is certainly old and historic, but this area of New York apparently has quite a bit of homes from this time period. While the home cost the Clintons nearly $2 million, it was said that they were up to their ears in debt at the time of purchase from legal bills while they were in the White House. They first accepted help from a friend and fundraiser, Terry McAuliffe, to secure the mortgage on the Chappaqua home, but they turned down his offer due to criticism from the public. They got it either way. Tucked away in a wooded area, the Clintons live 35 miles outside of New York City, while inside the home offers 11 rooms, including a reported five bedrooms and four bathrooms. On the grounds of the home, there's a large swimming pool as well as other features like a red barn structure. The barn is apparently where the family's security staff used to live. A large white fence surrounds their property while an additional security office was placed at the front gate for protection. When Bill and Hillary first chose this home, neighbors weren't too pleased. Chappaqua had a small population and residents didn't want all the commotion that this famous family might bring. No local country or golf clubs would admit the Clintons at first as members worried about the disorder they would create. So back then, Bill and Hillary had to find the next closest option, so they joined Donald Trump's Trump National Golf Club Westchester. I wonder if any of the clubs are letting them in these days. Their home was known in the town's history as Little Brook Farm, and it seemed a bit unimpressive for a family of their caliber. A real estate agent at the time the Clintons moved in 
said the lovely living space included a large living room that flowed into a library, which is perfect for book loving Bill. And there was also a family room connected to the kitchen as well as a sunroom. Back in the early 2000s, fans also got a glimpse inside the residence when Bill took Oprah on a tour of the property in a short segment on her talk show. Bill showed off his favorite rooms in the home as well as the couple's collection of mementos from their world travels. These included a South African souvenir and a large rain stick. He also took viewers inside that red barn, which was converted into the space that it is today, serving as a guest house or staff quarters or whatever. In 2016, Bill and Hillary Clinton reportedly expanded on their longtime home in Chappaqua by purchasing the house next door for $1.16 million. The ranch style abode is set on just over 1.5 tree dotted acres in the same cul-de-sac they've been living in. Rumors were that the new home could possibly have been meant as a visiting retreat for the couple's daughter Chelsea and her family, including her two kids. Inside the additional home spanned 3,631 square feet of space, along with three bedrooms throughout and a 212 square foot basement. The property had been recently renovated and offered an open plan layout with a ton of windows, adding natural lights as well as pecan colored wood floors underfoot. Other highlights of this property included a modern chef's kitchen with brand name appliances, which then opened to an eating area with fireplace, as well as a spacious family room with built-ins and elsewhere. The master suite boasted a recently redone ensuite as well as two large walk-in closets. Out back, there was a chic swimming pool surrounded by patio space and sun lounger. The only time in recent years that the Chappaqua home doesn't serve as the Clinton's main home is when Hillary is in residence at the Capitol. In that case, the couple also maintains a property called Whitehaven, which they've owned since departing the White House. In 2019, Hillary offered a rare peek into their part-time mansion located in Washington, D.C., which was a neo-Georgian residence that she'd redone over the years. Located a mere three kilometers from the White House, this property cost the Clintons $2.85 million and spans 5,500 square feet of space. This daily mansion features an airy conservatory room and out on the grounds, there's a large swimming pool and stunning gardens. Hillary said when they were looking at this home, the gardens were just the most amazing that I had seen anywhere in my real estate tour. Clearly, Hillary has a thing for gardens. After purchasing the red brick built house, which dates back to 1951, Hillary had the place extensively renovated from 2003 to 2006. She had the help of interior designer Rosemary Howe to help carry this out and in the end, the home was more light filled with open plan spaces to relax and entertain. Most of the rooms now also open to the gorgeous gardens outside. Some of the other things that were done to the Clinton's Washington home included refitting the bathrooms and kitchens, as well as new furnishings. At the time, Hillary said she loves using the outdoor area at this property, post large groups of people as there's plenty of space, the landscaped garden, pool, and even a pool house. All right, everyone, now that we've checked out the homes of Bill and Hillary Clinton over the years, that's gonna wrap up today's house tour. Before we go, answer this question for me. If you ever lived in the White House, what do you think would be your favorite perk or part of the property to enjoy? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram to chat. I'm Kara the Vampire Slayer, and if you would like to check out another tour before you go, then stay tuned because next, we're gonna check out the homes of current President Joe Biden. Bye. Joe Biden now has a career in public office dating back over 44 years. That's close to double my age. Throughout that entire time, he's had the nickname Middle Class Joe and has often referred to himself as one of the poorest members of Congress. All my time in public life, from since I've gotten involved, I've been referred to as Middle Class Joe. It's not always meant as a compliment. These days, he's definitely not the poorest member of Congress with multiple real estate holdings like a few in Delaware and living in lavish homes throughout the years, which we'll check out in this video. Joe Biden comes from scrappy roots. He was born in Scranton, Pennsylvania to a father that suffered a series of financial setbacks. And for a short time there, at least, Joe wasn't any different. According to the Wall Street Journal, the reason why Biden was so often at the bottom of the wealth ladder among his other colleagues 
colleagues in the Senate had a lot to do with his lifelong obsession for real estate. He wrote in his autobiography, Promises to Keep, Even as a kid in high school, I'd been seduced by real estate. As a youngster in his 20s, Biden began buying up homes, especially ones outside of his budget, taking out multiple mortgages and receiving loans against life insurance policies. As he grew older, his net worth was often in the negatives and by 2007, he was ranked as the least wealthy senator in the US when his net worth was estimated to be less than $30,000. But today, the 77-year-old presidential elect is far from middle class. According to a 2019 Forbes estimate, Biden and his wife Jill are now worth as much as $9 million, much of which was earned from $100,000 speaking fees and $8 million book deals that came pouring in after his vice presidency. About $4 million of his overall net worth is estimated to be wrapped up in his current real estate holdings, two homes that he owns in Delaware, and today I'm going to tell you not only about them, but a couple others he's lived in over the years too. How's it going guys and gals? It's Kara here for you with a brand new house tour. I noticed 95% of you watching aren't subscribed, so hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. We post a new video daily. Today we're going to be taking a look at the homes of presidential elect Joe Biden, and while we don't have a whole lot to share with you in terms of the current interiors of these homes, I've still got all the details you could want along with some juicy gossip. So if you've ever wanted to know how Joe Biden lives by the end of this video, you will. As always, let me know what you think by following me on Instagram or dropping your thoughts in the comments down below. Now let's get into this video. Let's start with the Biden's main home located in Wilmington, Delaware. The house is situated to overlook a man-made lake that was created by the wealthy members of the DuPont family. Local real estate agents called this area one of the most expensive in the state, and it's known as Chateau Country thanks in large part to a group of massive colonial estates that were built in the area also by the DuPont family. Joe and Jill first purchased the four acres of land that this home sits on back in 1996 for $350,000. Soon after, they built a 6,850-square-foot home on the premises, which is now estimated to be worth somewhere in the $1 million to $2 million range. During his vice presidency, it was reported that Joe rented out the cottage located in the property to the Secret Service for $220 a month. I don't know how smart it is to make the people protecting you pay for the opportunity to do so, but one look at his bank account tells us it clearly worked out for him. A few years back when Joe's son Bo was valiantly fighting against brain cancer, Joe considered selling this home to help pay for the treatment, but he was discouraged from doing so by a pretty surprising source, President Barack Obama. President Obama offered to lend him the money instead. The Bidens are reportedly seen around town here a whole bunch, spending time at the local grocery store Jansen's Market, which is only a five minute drive from their home. They also attend the St. Joseph on the Brandywine Roman Catholic Church nearby. Before we move on to Biden's vacation home, I thought we'd take a quick look at Joe's former home located in the neighborhood of Greensville, Delaware, that recently came back to bite the president-elect a little bit. As you can see, the Trump family called this estate into question during the most recent election cycle, questioning how old, middle-class Joe could afford such a nice estate. But here's the thing, he doesn't own it, at least not anymore. Back in 1974, Joe was a very young senator and a recent widower when he purchased this former DuPont mansion for $185,000. At the time, he nicknamed the home The Station and it became his campaign headquarters for his first presidential run in 1988. Joe spent over two decades renovating the space and by the end, the home featured five bedrooms, 2.5 baths, and over 10,000 square feet of living space. After staying here for close to 20 years, Joe sold this home back in 1996 for $1.2 million, a substantial gain over what he paid for it. Today, estimates suggest that the home is worth as much as $1.7 million. Look, when you're a politician, sometimes you just need to get away from it all. Next up is a look at Joe's vacation home, located in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware. In the summer of 2017, Joe was coming off of eight years as the vice commander in chief, and he must have been looking for a little R&R because because he and his wife Jill settled on this home on the Delaware shore, scooping it up for 2.7 million. This beautiful 4,786 square foot beach house overlooks Cape Hennelepin State Park and is just a couple blocks from the beach. It features three stories, six bedrooms, 5.5 baths, expansive porches, views of the Atlantic Ocean, and a backyard built for entertaining, including an outdoor kitchen, barbecue, and fireplace to impress all those Washington socialites that Joe is close with. After buying this home, Joe said in a statement, Throughout our careers, Jill and I have dreamed of being able to buy a place at the beach 
at home where we can bring the whole family. We feel very lucky that we're now able to make that happen and are looking forward to spending time with our family in the place that matters most to us in the world. For those of you paying attention, 2017 is the same year that Biden's net worth catapulted upwards thanks to the speaking arrangements and book deals. So in a very real way, I think this home was a gift from Joe to Joe. When you're running for the most public office in all the land, people are gonna dig up a whole lot about your past. One of the homes that middle class Joe was associated with owning was this rental home located in McLean, Virginia. In actuality, the Bidens only rented this home between 2017 and 2019, paying $20,000 per month for a home that's estimated to be worth somewhere in the $4 million range after moving out of the vice presidential residence at the Naval Observatory at the end of his term. This upscale neighborhood in Virginia is practically a who's who of senators, Supreme Court justices, and Washington diplomats. While staying here, Joe lived in a Georgian style house, which he rented from venture capitalist Mark Ain, who previously purchased the home from Alexander Hagg, the Secretary of State, during the Reagan administration. Sprawled out at over 12,000 square feet, this five bedroom beauty has its own gym, sauna, floor to ceiling windows, and a driveway that's big enough for nearly 20 cars. Despite how nice it is, in 2019, preparation for his up upcoming presidential bid, Joe and his wife moved out of this home to focus on the campaign. All right, guys, I think we'll bring this house tour to an end right there. What did you guys think about Joe Biden's homes? Which one of his many different paths would you prefer to stay at? Give me his beach house in Delaware and I'd be good to go. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments down below. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and I'll catch you all in the next video. Bye.